Hello everyone, this is Leo and welcome to a new tutorial by Blau Films. Today we will be looking at something that I have been doing a lot in the last few years, which is TV screen replacement. It seems to be a very common effect required in music videos or I guess even commercials and sometimes even short films. So today we will be looking at this shot that I got from Eric Alcaraz. This is for a music video for a song by Jan Eko called Our Lies. The clip that we will be looking at has a few things that are a bit more complicated. We are doing a lateral track and we are passing this wall that will slowly reveal the TV in the background. The TV, because of the lateral track, is having some perspective change and probably the most obvious thing that you VFX artists are noticing is there are no motion trackers on here and the green screen looks incredibly shitty. So how do you deal with footage that is not prepared for the visual effects workflow? How do you work around all these little kinks and still manage to get a pretty decent looking screen replacement? There is one asset you will need to create a realistic screen replacement which I've made available for free on the ArtStation store. I will leave a link in the description below so you'll get there quickly. It's this over here. CRT TV Diode Texture. As you can see on this image, it's basically it's a RGB split. You have rows and rows and rows of all these little diodes. Um, you can actually create these yourself, just make one of these small things and duplicate them into a long row and then duplicate them horizontally, leaving a gap of two and then you repeat the process with the correct offset so you get a R, a G and a B. Here are some examples of what you can do with this asset. Here I am applying the RGB diodes to a uh, Cinema 4D render. I feel like that's what really gives it justice when you can really zoom in and get those macro details. Yeah, just be sure to download them and then you're ready to follow right along. I've already got this project opened. I was still working on it. I'm not completely finished yet. I will finish the screen replacement with you in this video and I will guide you through some of the first initial steps that I did until getting to this point. Here on the left side of my project window you can see that I created a bunch of folders and just to keep them organized I've named them 001 dash and then whatever it is that's inside of the folder and then every number that goes every number that goes up 002, 003, After Effects will automatically organize them stacked one on top of the other. I don't know I'm, I'm, I'm really not that organized but for this tutorial Let's pretend I am. In the first folder, I've created the CRT diodes. This is what you will get inside of the pack. It's a black and white Luma mask image that has these rows of diodes. The second folder has the footage. Here I have the background footage. There are no motion trackers. Please, 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 for the love of anything that's sacred, if you're making a short film, if you're making a video, you need some screen replacement, put a few motion tracking markers. You know what? Go into the description below. I've got a download file for you with a very simple template for motion trackers. Just print these out, cut them out, and paste them somewhere, and you'll be good to go. There's nothing more fancy you need. Um, the green screen over here. So this green screen actually causes more trouble than it causes any help to us. Um, the this is a piece of green paper that's like very wrinkly and folded it's <laughs> it's very difficult to work with um let me zoom in over here let's let's really look at this the biggest problem i'm noticing is on the left and right side on the left side the fold that the green screen is making is covering most of the inside rim from the TV, which means we will have to uh, fill that gap back up with uh, some other piece of this TV from somewhere else. On the right side, we have kind of the opposite problem where we are missing a chunk of the green screen. We're missing a chunk of the screen. 
what this tells me when I look at it is that simply doing a color key on the green and using that as a mat is not going to work at all. We will have to just manually make a mask around this. So I went in, I imported that footage, created the new composition. I selected the footage, I went into animation, track and Boris Mocha, opened Mocha. And now the next step is we need to track the surface of this television so that whatever footage we put on top of it will be correctly corner pinned onto this surface. But we have the first big problem, which is we have this big massive wall that's crossing the frame. The first thing we will have to do is we will have to mask the wall. So I'm just going to go to the pen tool. I'm selecting this point somewhere in the middle because at the end the wall is not there and in the beginning there's no edge to the wall. I'm going to track that forward. The first thing we can see is that immediately after a few frames we start getting some frame shifting. So I'm going to just go back in, select these points and drag them back into position. You're going to follow this process for whatever layer is in front of your TV. If it's a person passing, you will have to make some several layers, several masks to accurately select the person. If it's, uh, if it's a wall, you know, just, just do this. I'm going to track backwards from that point. I've already done this, so I'm just showing you a little bit of the process here. But the most important step is, after that, Horus Maka sees the hierarchy of layers as the top ones being the thing that's closest to the camera and the bottom one being the thing that's furthest away. If we were to now track the TV, we would have to make a new layer and place it underneath the layer one. Now this is where it gets a bit tricky because our image is very washed out. The TV and the background and the foreground of the wall don't actually have that much contrast between them. So I've tried this many, many times, but the track did not work. So I'm quickly going to exit this and I will show you what it is that I did. I selected the layer and I put an exposure adjustment. I lowered the gamma correction to make sure that we get strong contrast at the darks but keep the lights as bright as possible. And then I upped up the exposure. And now you have a pretty strong contrast between the TV and the background layer. Let me show you the clip that I ended up using. It's about as much contrast as you just saw. I re-exported that as a new layer and I imported it again into our final work comp. Now in here, that's where I added the mocha. So here I have imported the gamma corrected version of the background clip. Two tracking layers as you can see. The first one is a full track of the wall. We're making sure that we're excluding that track. After I track the wall, I have deselected the cog wheel up here and I have created a second layer. Now I will quickly turn that layer off and draw one again. I've selected this corner up here, the next one, the bottom one, and we just went around. Now we hit control or your top button on your pen. I drag these handlebars out to make sure that we have a pretty sharp edge. Now, now if your shape of your track looks nice, that still doesn't mean that the perspective data of your track is actually correctly matching. So up here there are these three buttons, the big S in the blue box. If we press that, that's your surface align tool. So we drag that one and we put each of these corners to be aligned with the edges of the screen. What this is doing is you're defining that the screen is diagonally placed from the camera. If you then select this pink grid, you can do a quick check to see if the grid is actually matching perspective. First, you've got to drag down layer 3 to be below layer 1 and make sure the cogwheel is selected, but the cogwheel for the top layer is deselected. There, just track forwards or track backwards and it should be fine. I have already done that. So here you go, let's have a look. Except for a few little bumps and twitches that we're getting in the beginning, the perspective track is looking pretty solid. It's sticking on there pretty nicely. As opposed to when we didn't apply the color correction beforehand, it just didn't stick at all. Now after you have your track, what you do is you hit the save button up top, you close out, you're back into your main view. Now, in here, 
Under Tracking Data, you will have to first press Create Track Data. Select the layer that you want to create a track for. It will create these virtual corner pin points onto your footage. You then want to select the layer you want to send that corner pin data to and then hit Apply Export. I am choosing corner pin that supports motion blur. I guess the next important thing that we want to dive in quickly is the actual screen replacement. Up here in layer 5, if I open that up, we have this 1920 by 1080 composition and inside of that is actually our screen replacement. When Mocha exports the corner pin information to a certain layer, the layer you want to corner pin has to be the exact resolution as your backplate footage. Our backplate layer is 4096 by 2160. Our overlay footage is actually a pretty different resolution. It's 4096 by 3072, which is a uh, 4 by 3 aspect ratio, kinda. You know what? Let me show you what happens if you do it wrongly. If I import this layer in here, which is a 4 by 3 composition inside of our 16 by 9 composition, and then I select the uh, track, I create the tracking data, and then I select the overlay test, apply corner pin data. There you go. This is this is what happens. Get a complete misalignment of the corners of our footage with the actual corner pin and where it should be. The way you can fix that is actually pretty simple. So let's just delete that corner pin and let's just delete that entire file and just drag it back in. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go up to layer and pre-compose and move all attributes into a new composition. It will create a new composition that is the exact resolution size as our backplate footage. If you go in there, now you have that composition, but you have that footage that is bigger than the actual composition. What you want to do is you want to select the layer and right click, go to transform, and then down here there is fit to comp. When you hit that, it basically squeezed down the scale of your image. Now if you go back out and you come into here and you select that layer for the corner pin data and you apply the export, now magically it's working perfectly. I have already done that. Now because of our TV screen being smaller than the edges of our corner pin, I have selected that layer and I've simply scaled it down until it fit perfectly. So I guess it's time to look into the actual TV look. At the bottom I started by creating a layer, new, solid, and I made a black solid. The reason why you want to start with a black solid is because we'll be working with additive effects that will have some transparency in between them. By having a black solid behind everything, you won't have a transparent layer when you import it over your screen. Then we have these six layers over here. Now this is where the RGB diode comes in play. I've imported all three of these channel diodes. We have the red over here, the green over here, and the blue over here. And underneath each of these layers is the footage you want to be replacing on the screen. Eric sent me this very nihilistic clip of a bunch of buildings being torn apart and destroyed. I've dragged a copy of that video underneath each one of these RGB diodes. You want to select each of these layers and go to track mat, luma mat. Now the blue footage is only shining through this white layer of the diodes. We are luma matting it, so all the black disappears and only these white rows stay intact. Now how do you get the footage to be blue? You go up here to effect, channel, and then there is this effect called shift channels. In shift channels I have turned off take red from and I've turned off take green from. And take blue, I've put that to blue. Now you will repeat the process with green footage, but now your shift channels will make everything off except for green being taken from green. And then we have the red channel, which comes right over here. Shift channels, take red from red, and green and blue are turned off. All three of these are luma matted, and what we have is this. We reintroduce the footage. If you go far enough away from it, you actually get to see the full image. But the closer you get, you will only start to see the diodes. Depending on the kind of TV and how old the TV is, 
this is where you will have to start playing around with the scale of these RGB diodes. Just make sure that you select all three of them at the same time when you start playing around with the scale. Now the one thing that we get right now is that because we are splitting the entire luminance value into just one single channel for each row, we're losing a lot of brightness from our image. So the layers you're seeing up top here are really just to reintroduce that brightness. I've created an adjustment layer and I've added a elliptical mask and I've selected each of these horizontal points and I've dragged their arms up until they're almost reaching the top and bottom. Into the mask I selected add and into the feather I gave it a feather of about 800 pixels. Now it's 800 because we're working with a composition that's about 4000 pixels wide. If you're working in a 1920 composition just make that about 200, 300 and you'll be fine. I went into effect, color correction, exposure and I dragged the exposure way up to about 2.8 and I've brought down the gamma correction a little bit to make sure that we don't get too much highlights into the shadows. As you can see here it's already looking a little bit more natural for the light that's coming from a TV. This layer up here is a layer new solid and I made it the black solid and then in the mask tool I went for the rounded rectangle tool. I've created the mask from top to bottom. I put it to subtract and I gave it a feather of about 620 pixels. That would be about 100 pixels in a 1920 composition. This is what that looks like. It's basically a vignette that's following the contours of the TV screen, giving it a bit more of a three-dimensional look. Now we have two layers that are creating a bit of a glow that are going to go on top. I've created a layer, new adjustment layer, and I gave it a effect blur and sharpen Gaussian blur. Repeat edge pixels and 50%. I set that layer to add and I lowered the opacity to just be about 15%. The only thing we're doing here is we're really just blooming out some of these details from all of these diodes. I have duplicated that layer, I've lowered the opacity to 10% and I've increased the Gaussian blur to about 200 pixels. Alright, so now we get to these two yellow layers here. I wanted to create the 60Hz flicker that you get from an old CRT TV. And the way that I did that is not entirely bulletproof. I'm not sure if this is the way you should do it. If you have a better suggestion, please leave a comment below. I'd love to know how to do it in an easier way. But I, um, so this is kind of the way that I thought of it. Um, I know that Colorama has an evolution cycle, which we can animate. And if you have a black and white gradient with black on the top and white at the bottom, and then you add a posterize effect and you put that to something like five or six bands, you get this really interesting pixelated bar effect. Um, it's nothing special right now, but if you combine that with the colorama effect and you put the output cycle to ramp gray so that nothing changes, you have this phase shift cycle up here I'm really not sure if this is the way to go about it, but if you go into the input phase down here and you alt click on the phase shift, you can put in an expression which is going to tell After Effects how fast this grayscale is, has to cycle through this ramp of gray over here. So, um, let, so this black up top is going to become uh, gray and lighter gray and and very light gray and then white and this white up here is going to jump into black and then follow the entire cycle. Time down here is an expression that will tell you how many degrees each of these color bars will be spinning depending on the time code that we will be in. Now for 60 Hertz that means that it's going to have 60 bands of flicker happening every second. Now, I'm not sure if my calculation is working, but I believe it would have to be negative 21,600 as a multiplication behind time. But when I did that, nothing happened. I believe After Effects is not able to do that high of a phase shift. So I ended up settling at negative 7,200. That seems to work fine. It 
it's not really accurate, but I guess it's I guess it's perfectly fine for what we're doing here. And then after that, I added a fast box blur of 50 with three iterations and the repeat edge pixel, just to make sure that we're not getting these super harsh lines. But even that didn't completely work because after about two or three seconds, it just stopped cycling. It just I guess the phase shift must have like some gap that it that it gets to. It just stops cycling through the colors. So the way that I went about it is I did the two seconds. I exported that as a video, which you can see here. And then I re-imported that video into After Effects, put it into a new composition, and I just put four of them after the other. Now, I know this is a very dirty, gritty way to do it, but, you know, got to do what you got to do. Now, what I did afterwards is I created a new white solid. I put that to add. You can't really see it right now, but when it's playing, you'll see it banding upwards. I ended up using a duplicate of the rounded edges square mask black solid. I duplicated that, put it on top, and I lowered the feather all the way to zero. But now that I'm looking at it, I might actually put it to about two. So here you go, now you have your realistic CRT TV screen. You can do this with any kind of footage, it really doesn't matter because it's a pretty non-destructive process. Luma masking RGNB and start adding shit until it looks like something that resembles a screen. Just as a recap, I have pre-composed that layer inside of a composition matching the original composition of our backplate, and then I've dragged that final composition in here. I applied the corner pin data to the screen, and now we have the screen perfectly matching the position and orientation of our television set. I guess you could say it looks fine, but there are a few things that make it really stand out that this looks fake. The first thing is that look at the hotness of the light over here. So on this right top corner over here, you have this info bar that's showing you RGBA values. If you hover with your mouse over the hotspot of the light, you can see that we're getting values of 0 0.9, 0 0.9, and 0 0.8. If we hover over the television screen, we're getting values of 0 0.7, 0 0.5, so it's way, way lower. The way we have to fix that is simply by either adding an equalize effect, but I feel like that really crushes the blacks in a weird way. So I prefer to use an exposure effect, and in this case I put it to 1.5 and I lowered the gamma to 0.9. Now if we hover over, we're getting 0 0.9, 0 0.8, 0 0.8 in the highlights, and we're getting some ones over here as well, but that's on the brightest spots, and we're not even looking at the brightest spots of the lamp, so I guess it's fine. I guess it looks believable enough. If we zoom in, we can clearly see that our screen replacement is much sharper than the background footage. I feel like camera lens blur is the best and guess only option for this to truly match the blur of the background. I put the blur radius to 2. I don't actually know what this was shot on, but knowing Eric, I'm not assuming that he's using a hexagonal lens. I'm assuming it's going to be an octagon. What this is referring to, by the way, is the amount of blades that are on the inside of the aperture. So if you have a relatively cheap lens, you tend to have less blades than like a very very expensive lens that has so many blades that the bokeh looks like a circle. Now the aspect ratio I'm keeping that on 1. If this was shot anamorphic you will have to turn that down to let's say 0 0.5 or you'd probably have to check a lens chart to make sure that you have the correct ratio there. I believe this is just spherical so 1 is fine. Definitely least fun part of this tutorial. How do we mat out the very shitty green screen and put our footage in there? Well, we don't. It really doesn't work. So I went in there, I uh, created a duplicate of a backplate, and I opened Mocha. And in there I created this new layer. I just went with the pen and I, I very carefully went around this uh, bulging of the TV on this side. And you want to have the bulging on this side as well. 
if you look at this right side, you want to make sure that you include more than just what you're seeing on the green screen. Really imagine the green screen is not there. Just imagine the TV screen behind it. What I did, because we actually already have the tracking data of the corner pin information, the only thing I did is I kept that corner pin layer selected as the tracker layer. And this new layer down here under layer properties, I selected link to layer two. And what that does is it makes sure that the entire tracking information from the previous layer is stuck onto this new map that we've created. As you can see on my timeline, I have created a few adjustment points where sometimes my edges were shifting a little bit. You just go in there and pull them back into position. You save and you go out. And instead of tracking data, what we need to do now is we need to open the mat drop down menu and just select create AE masks. There you go. You have all these keyframes for the mask path. I gave it a feather of about three and I have alpha matted the screen right onto there. Perfect. We're making a lot of progress now. A few more things we have to do. Now the first and most obvious one is how do we get rid of this little section of green screen that's over here. There is a lazy way of doing it and there is a more straightforward way of doing it. The straightforward way is you would go in, you would make a nice selection of this section with the diagonal at the bottom and a diagonal at the top and you would either in Photoshop or with a section of the other part of the TV screen, you would paint that back in. You would track it and that will be it. The lazy way is the one we're going for. First, let me show you. This is what it looks like. It works. It's perfectly nice. So I created a copy of our gamma corrected background layer because I feel like the green screen there is a bit stronger and a bit better for this kind of use. Because we have to be filling in that section that is green screen already, we can actually make use of the fact that we have a green screen at all. So I went into effect and um, keying, key light, added key light, and I selected the green. What that did is classic green screen fashion, we have excluded the green screen. Now I went to screen mat so that we can see what it is we have selected. I added the screen pre-blur of two, and inside of screen mat, I've increased the clip black to make sure we have a pretty nice selection of our green screen. Now the next thing I want to do, I want to expand this mat to make sure that these harsh edges of the green screen are a bit bigger than what they are now, but they're also soft and feathered out and blending in with the environment. If we manage to do that, we can take a section of the right side of the TV and apply that underneath the green and everything would be working perfectly fine. The way we can achieve that is by using one of the math effects called Math Choker. Now, to make it work, you will have to switch back in key light from screen math to final result, because this in final result is the only time when it's actually calculating it to be an alpha. Let's turn on the uh, transparency over here. Matte Choker, I gave it a uh, geometric softness of about 8. A choke of 75, uh, 100, 0, 0, 100, and 1 iteration. Now, let me toggle it on and off. What it does is it basically feathers out the edges of your mat. Now, there is one other thing we need to do, and that is I applied a simple choker mat effect, which is effect mat simple choker. And the good thing about simple choker is that you can actually now select this entire mat and expand it even more, make the hole bigger. And that's it. You turn that layer off, you select your backplate. Let me show you what that backplate is. I went to the final frame of our footage and I made a duplicate of our backplate. But I made a mask around this section on the right over here from our TV. The reason why I selected this is because I feel like it's probably somewhat the same material as the inside rim of the TV, or at least it's going to match pretty accurately with what we have here. I hit right click on the image, went to time, and I selected freeze frame. As you can see, we have a time remapping node over here. So I could then reposition the frame to put it over here, and we are alpha inverting the layer up top, the previous layer with our expanded green screen mat. 
Now the next thing I did is I added a curves adjustment to make sure it's perfectly matching with the rest of the insides of this image. There's also a keyframe on the curves adjustment because there is a little bit of a color and intensity change that's going on throughout the image and I made sure to compensate for that but the lesson here is really just make sure to use as much of your own footage as possible to fix and cover up the other mistakes that you have in your shot. The backplate image that we have just applied, we need to make sure that it's perfectly tracked to that position. The way I did that is inside of that same layer I went into Mocha and I created this track over here which is really just selecting this little bit of a sharp diagonal that's happening here on the green screen. This tracked perfectly, I went to tracking data, created the track data for that track and then now the export options are not going to be corner pin because we just need to have the position data so transform data and I went into layer new null object which is this over here green screen camera track I applied the transform to that layer hit apply export here you go you have the null with that section the back plate that is tracked to that null and the little piece of green screen with an expanded feathered mask that is revealing this right section of the TV onto the inner rim of this left side of the TV. When Eric contacted me and asked me for some advice for shooting this shot, I told him that it would be nice to have some kind of a practical light, a cold practical light, that will mimic the light of the TV. By shooting that onto the actor's face and giving it some sort of a flicker, you do get the feeling that there is something actually on the TV, as opposed to them just staring at a green screen. Now, the problem you get with that is that unless you know exactly what the footage is going to be on the screen, it's basically impossible to predict how the flicker should be on the face of your actors. So the only thing we can do is find a way to match the exact flicker that's happening on set with the flicker on the screen of our footage. Now how do you go about that? I'm not exactly sure again if the way that I did it is the best or even more uh, most ergonomical way to do it but uh, here's how it happened. So I dragged the back blade into a new composition. We know that the head of the actress is what's catching most of the light changes from the practical source. I went into Mocha and in here I created this layer 4 which is a track that tracks all around of the surface of the head. After saving I went into Matte, Create AE Masks and as you can see here we created this mask that is perfectly excluding the head of the actress. I applied a color correction tint effect followed by a color correction exposure effect. Crunched down the gamma all the way to 0.10 and I put the exposure up to 2.8. We're getting a pretty clean and obvious flicker on the face of the actress. Now I went in, added this to the render queue and exported this as a ProRes 4444 video. I dragged it into a new composition over here and uh, <laughs> this is the crazy part basically what I was thinking if we can zoom into that footage so much but so much that the only thing we get is a screen filled with uh, the section of the actress's face that is actually uh, being affected by the flicker then we create a new adjustment layer and we add a fast box blur of about 500 pixels and then we add another fast box blur of about 2300 pixels. We have essentially created a solid with a little bit of a gradation that will be flickering. At some points it will be darker and at some points it will be brighter and it will essentially be a luma mask that can drive a exposure adjustment layer that is perfectly matching the time code of each flicker in the original footage. Now to preserve RAM I have again exported this whole shenanigans into a ProRes 4444 file. I've dragged that back into my project file and then I have created a duplicate 
of my TV screen mat and I have dragged the original clip in there and I have added that TV screen mat on top. We don't have to do anything about uh, corner pinning or anything, don't worry about it, we just need the general idea of the lightness value. And then I ended by creating an alpha mask for that screen. And now we have a perfect representation of the flicker, the way that it was going on with the practicals on screen, perfectly fitting to the screen that we have in our overlay. I uh, pre-composed that whole thing, pre-composed these two layers, moved them into a new attribute. I've dragged them on top of our working comp. I've added an exposure effect of about 0.6. And that one is Luma masked with the precomp. So every time that our precomp flickers white, it will reveal our adjustment layer on that section with an opacity of 100%. And every time that precomp flickers black, our adjustment layer will lower its opacity to 0%. And then we have one more final thing, which is our backplate. I went into Mocha, selected the tracking data for our wall and I exported a track mat for that. I put the feather to about four and the uh, mask expansion. There's a little section over here when it's crossing the screen where sometimes we did reveal a little bit of uh, green screen. I uh, played around with the mask expansion to make sure that it works correctly. Cool. So now there are two little more steps to do. It's really just a finishing off thing. The first thing is that if we look at this light source over here at the top left corner, we can see that there is a bit of a glow coming from it. It's a uh, pretty hazy shot. So we need a bit of a glow coming from this TV screen as well. The way that I will do this is simply by uh, selecting the CRT TV and the TV screen mat and duplicating them. And then I will select Command Shift C for pre-compose, move all attributes. Now I will come in here, effect, blur, Gaussian blur, and I will increase that blur to about, let's say, uh, let's look at the other light source. 190 looks about all right. And I'm gonna put that to screen. We're going to lower this down to about 10%. And now I'm going to make another duplicate of that layer. And I'm going to increase the blurriness to about 200, 250. And then we have one more duplicate of that layer, which I will increase to about 400. The integration to me looks pretty solid right now. The final thing we will have to do is that we are working with... Um, Pretty noisy footage as you can see on this right side over here especially in the darks of the TV if we go to the bright side you can see that the noise is far less prevalent what I will do however is add a little bit of noise to make sure that this section of the image feels believable and feels integrated um, I'm going to make one more copy of our screen mat and I will come into here layer new solid make comp size and the solid color that we want is 50% gray. You can simply type it in here, 50. I'm turning off that layer right now and I'm going to select Command Shift 4 to make a screen capture of this section of the noise. And I'm opening this little software called Pure Ref. It's a uh, reference mood board kind of thing that you can uh, overlay on top of whatever window you're working. I'm just gonna keep that there going to turn on my gray solid effect noise and grain add grain turn preview to final output and now let's try to accurately match the uh, noise we're seeing over here so the first thing I can tell you is that our noise is not strong enough so I'm going to put the intensity to about 1.2 uh, 1.3 1.3 would be enough yep there you go and now into color, there is uh, quite a lot of color variation going on in here. If we zoom into our layer, there is also a bit of color, but I feel like the saturation can go up to about 1.2. Yeah, there you go. That's perfect. I feel like that's uh, 
pretty accurate match. Now, the one thing we will have to check is the size of the noise. So I'm going to I'm going to zoom in a bit, and I will toggle the noise off and on to check if our size is matching, and it seems to be matching pretty well. Perfect. So select that layer, track mat. Alpha mat the layer up top, which is our screen, and then we'll select mode and go to soft light. You can see that we have added the noise relatively nicely onto the footage. And shit, that's it. This is kind of how you go through it, how you get a uh, pretty clean screen replacement. The uh, CRT TV diodes, I think, is uh, a very essential part of the process to really get that uh, little banding effect that you see when you start moving around it. Be sure to download it here. Here's another shot from the music video where you can see the screen head on. The link for this will be in the description as I mentioned before. Be sure to download it and uh, you'll be good to go. Thanks a lot for watching everybody. The channel is uh, slowly slowly growing. If you reach the end of the video, thank you, thank you so much. User retention rate is still one of the things I'm not very good at. So thank you very much if you stick till the end and uh, be sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment if there's something you want to see, if you have any questions, I'm uh, always reading them, I'll be replying and uh, see you probably next week or a week and a half. Thank you.